Yeah. So I was going to talk about erectile dysfunction third or fourth, but we're already there. So let's let's stay with it. Um, <laughs> sounds like sounds like it's a fairly common experience for those of you treating folks with with PD and other age related sort of conditions. How do you in, in lay terms, how do you start sort of figuring out is, is PD driving this or the medications that a person's taking for PD or is it mostly age related or is it a combination? How do you sort of assess that and what would you want, you know, folks with Parkinson's or their care partners to know um, as they're coming in and talking with you about this thing that they may be reticent about uh, speaking of? Who wants to go first? Um, okay, I, I, I can start, I guess. Um, it, the answer to your first part of your question is yes, 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 and yes. Most often I find it's a combination of all those things. A big part of my practice is the older generation population. So they're going to have pre-existing some level of ED anyways. Um, and that's the often vasculogenic based, you know, narrowing the blood vessels, et cetera. Uh, but then you couple onto that huge issues on top of that. You have the dopamine side of it. So, you know, the lack of dopamine can also exacerbate the issues with erectile dysfunction. Um, along with that, you have huge movement issues. You know, uh, a lot of these guys become very self-conscious that they can't move their body around the way they used to in order to help perform. And uh, that can include fatigue, include pain, it can include uh, dyskinesias, dystonias, all these things which kind of compound it from the psychological side. Um, so those two kind of hand in hand mixed together and exacerbated. I also see you asked about the care partners, big issue, no question about it. When you have something, somebody coming in um, who's been looking after their husband uh, for the last you know, X number of years, and we know that for a number of biological and psychological reasons, women as they get older do have challenges in, in, uh, in sexuality. And then you exacerbate that with the whole issue of taking care of somebody, you're fatigued taking care of somebody um, um, as a care partner. And then you also have issues with um, also, you, know, you see them disconnected. How do you connect with that person uh, emotionally or, or intimately when they're moving and disconnected? You think, okay, they're pain, in pain. How can I form a sexual bond at that moment, a moment of intimacy? So they have their issues. You have huge sleep issues. You know, these patients uh, have insomnia and sleep problems, which again, compound into the erectile dysfunction. So unlike the, the standard patient that comes in with erectile dysfunction is essentially unlike pre-Masters and Johnson's days. It used to be in the 60s and 50s. We thought 90% is in your head, 10% is actually organic. We've now reversed it. We found that 90% is organic based with plumbing or hormonal or electrical problems. And only 10% is in your head. I would say with, with Parkinson's, with all those issues I mentioned on the psychological and depression and, and th that, that side, the the non-organic side of it plays a huge role, meaning non-plumbing related. So yes, they have narrow blood vessels. So they have probably have associated diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, but you couple all those Parkinson's issues. And then I'm almost going to say it's close to 50, 50, uh, the two of them mixing together, causing significant erectile dysfunction issues. And then that then plays into the relationship, both on the care partner side, who's exhausted, sleep deprived uh, in, in that process. So you, you got to tackle it on, on multiple fronts to try to take care of it. <laughs>